Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Thanks so much for being here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to repot a Drosera carpensis or a Cape Sundew. This guy right here, we're going to be putting him in this planter for you and I'm going to show you that process. I'm also going to be giving you some care tips so you can kind of see how to take care of these, these Cape Sundews. It's, it's a really good beginner carnivorous plant uh, if you're a beginner grower, so this might be a good place for you to start if you're interested in, in checking out sundews. So let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick here. Let me get it a little closer for you. You can see here, this is our Drosera carpensis. You can, see the, you can see all the insects on there. The reason they're called sundews is because little balls of liquid form on the tips of these, and the insects actually get stuck to those. And, that's, and then what they do is they extract all the nutrients they need from the insect. And that's why they're a carnivorous plant, and that's why they're commonly referred to as sundews. So these are really, really cool plants. Uh, you can see they get, this one here, they come in all different types, uh, the, the green, the red types. This one here is one that turns a little more red, and this one actually has a pink flower. So this one's really cool, and I'm excited. There's actually a flower down here, so I'm hoping that that one, sometimes when you repot them after they've been shipped, they won't flower um, just from the shock. So I'm not holding my breath, but hopefully that that flower does still kind of pop out. But If you're subscribed to my channel, you probably know that my dream and goal is to start my own carnivorous plant nursery someday. I honestly can't even put into words how much it means to me that you're here now watching my video and supporting my dream. YouTube just released a new way for people to support small content creators like myself. It's called Super Thanks and you'll see it available at the bottom of all my videos. This allows a viewer to say thank you with a monetary contribution to support my channel. You can send two, five, ten, or even fifty dollars to the content creator and you get to leave a custom comment that will be displayed as a featured comment down in the comment section showing that you contributed. If you don't have any money to throw my way, please, no sweat. Uh, you being here, liking my videos, subscribing to my channel, and just consuming my content is huge in supporting me and my dream. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being amazing. Now let's go ahead and get back to the real reason that you're here. These are really cool carnivorous plants, so I'm gonna kinda of give you some care tips real quick and show you how to repot these. So really similar to Venus flytraps, they need a really nutrient poor soil. So I actually use a, a soil that's really similar to my Venus flytraps. And the only thing that I do is I make it a little bit sandier and a little bit chunkier with a little more perlite and a little more sand uh, just so that the water runs through it a little better. These do like to keep their feet wet so it is important to kind of keep them in a tray of water and you're going to want to go with distilled water, reverse osmosis water, rain water, uh, anything that's under 50 parts per million. They are pretty sensitive on the spectrum of carnivorous plants to minerals and nutrients in their water so you want to kind of avoid any type of like typical fertilizer. Uh, the way you can feed these is you can actually give them, you could put some fish food on the leaves here. They'll absorb the nutrients from fish food, just to make sure not to overdo it. You can actually use Maxi as well, which is like a carnivorous plant fertilizer. And you just want to make sure and put it on the leaves and not in the soil. Uh, and the soil can actually harm the plant, but if you just keep it on the leaves, it actually does the plant some good. So. The, the Drosera carpensis or the Cape Sundew is actually kind of one of the, the, a lot of people consider it like sort of the weed of carnivorous plants. These self-pollinate from a flower perspective and they, they actually, once they flower and they start generating seeds, they, they really just kind of pop up everywhere like weeds. If you have a carnivorous plant collection and these are around it, odds are you probably have little Cape Sundews popping up all over your, your pots. So it's, it's really, really common for them to just kind of spread like wildfire, which is why they're kind of considered one of the weeds of carnivorous plants. Not because they're unwanted, but because they, <laughs> they spread like crazy. So for repotting, you're gonna to wanna to do a plastic pot. You wanna avoid anything that's going to uh, leach minerals into this. So you wanna avoid any type of terracotta, any type of clay. Those type of planters could leach uh, minerals and nutrients into the soil and the water and can harm your Cape Sundew. So you wanna avoid that. Uh, what I do here for repotting is I do put a paper towel in the bottom and what that does is that actually keeps, uh, it, it makes it so that the, the paper towel can wick up the water and what we do is we're going to pack down the soil here on, uh, on top of this paper towel, not for the whole thing but just right on top of it to make sure that there's always soil in, in contact with the paper towel which is wicking up the water. Otherwise what can happen is, is your holes can get clogged by the perlite or the sand and it can actually stop absorbing the water into the pot so the paper towel makes it so that you can avoid that headache. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get our soil into the planter here. You can see, I'm showing the soil real quick. 
there's the soil. So you can see it's a little bit sandier than what you might see from like my Venus flytrap mixes. It's pretty nice. It's got uh, peat moss, perlite, and silica sand. All right, so I'm going about two thirds of the way up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack this down pretty tight here for the bottom of this. You don't wanna pack down the whole planter like this because you wanna you want to make sure that the roots have the ability to, to stretch out and grow. And if you pack it down this tight through the whole planter, sometimes the roots can't do that. But what this will do is this makes sure that the, the substrate's in contact with that paper towel and then the water will always be able to be absorbed up into the substrate. So, so there, the bottom of that is nice and compact. Once you get your soil on the top here, you do want to pack it down a little bit, not as much as you did on the bottom, but you want to pack it down just a little bit so that the, the soil kind of um, settles in here a little bit. We'll also top water this toward the end of this to make sure that this, the soil settles really well in here. It's important to top water whenever you replant something to make sure that the substrate is in contact with the roots. So one of the other reasons I really like Cape Sundews or Drosera is they're actually a great plant for growing indoors. Uh, you can actually grow these really well on a windowsill. And I know a lot of people are looking for those windowsill plants that'll grow well. They also are really good for gnat and fruit fly control. You can see on there, you can see the little, the little insects. They, these do a really, really good job when they're producing the dew to, to catch the, any, any type of, uh, especially smaller insects like, like fruit flies and gnats. So if you've got maybe something in your kitchen that's happening and you want to you wanna control a little bit of a gnat or a fruit fly outbreak, these are really, really good for that. And they, they grow really well on a windowsill. One thing to note is they will get a little more red and a little more dark the more light that they get. So if you do want to give them a grow light or supplement them with a grow light, they will get a little more dark red and turn a little bit prettier. Uh, they'll stay kind of more of this lighter green color uh, when you have them in the windowsill. So you can see also they don't have like a giant root system here. You can see it's a pretty nice little root system, but it's not massive like some of the Venus fly traps you get. This root system will obviously get a little bit bigger as this plant grows, um, but they do like to stretch out a little bit. So we're going to try to create a hole in the planter where we can stretch the root out. So usually just take like a pen or a, a screwdriver or something that where you can kind of create the hole. just a little bit so that it has support and it can stand up. I see I got a little extra guy here too that I'm also, I'm not gonna do it on video, but I just wanted to show you a little extra one here that I'm gonna go ahead and pot up in a little planter, but there we go. So there we go, so the Josera carpensis or Cape Sundew has now been repotted and I'm actually going to grow this one in my windowsill that's right in front of this video here. Uh, so I'm going to, to see, see how this does in my windowsill and probably not supplement it with much extra light. If I notice that it's not doing super well, I may supplement it with a little grow light at the end of the night just to give it a little bit extra oomph. But yeah, make sure and uh, like the channel or like the video, subscribe to the channel. That stuff helps me out a ton. I really, really appreciate it. Um, also make sure to subscribe because I'll be giving updates on this. I'm kind of hoping that this flower right here will take off and uh, continue to, to do what it was going to do and, and flower for me because I'd like to see the, the, the pink flower. But yeah, thanks a lot for stopping by and I really hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.